In the Pays de Gatine, the days stretch on in this early summer. In the hedged pasture lands, the farm animals take advantage of the last rays of sunshine. In the domesticated world, it's the daylight hours that set the pace, and each hour counts in this period of reaping. But as soon as the light begins to fade, the men leave the fields, abandoning them to the wildlife creatures to waste no time in coming there to pilfer seeds and freshly unearthed worms. While many of them get ready to take a well-deserved rest, others eagerly await nightfall, their protective cover from certain predators, and the possibility of seeing at last in the dark. Leader of the herd, this wild boar sow is at the head of a family of five piglets. They're all just one month old and still suckle their mother. They've slept all day and at sunset they eat hungrily. Their mother is waiting for darkness to fall. Tonight she's going to take them out foraging for a different kind of food, the first step towards their autonomy. But autonomy means also being able to survive at night. Although no other species dare attack her, the wild boar sow knows that at this tender age, her young ones are still vulnerable. So nighttime is also an opportunity to teach them how to identify threatening sounds and smells and how to avoid the dangers. Such as the surprise attacks of Europe's largest nocturnal bird of prey, the Eurasian eagle owl which is getting ready to go out on its first nocturnal hunting spree. Or respecting the territorial limits of the badger clans, when the males come out at night to stock up on food to feed their young. It's 10 p.m. Night falls over the Pays de Gatine. On the other side of the barrier, in these hours between dusk and dawn, the group can finally set off. snout to the ground, it's time to discover its hidden delicacies. Worms, roots, acorns, insects of all kinds, the wild boar piglets forage with relish. And they're very well equipped for this. Thousands of sensors in their young nasal cavities and as many tactile whiskers around their snout enable them to discover lots of new smells. In a few weeks' time, the rule in the herd will be order and discipline. But at just a month old, this joyful group of piglets can still enjoy their carefree freedom. And some don't hesitate to take full advantage of this. The wild boar sow is by nature cautious and nervous. The unruliness of her young obliges her to increase her vigilance, even though her sense of smell, capable of detecting a human presence at a distance of 3,000 meters, gives her a small head start. Of 
course, for a few weeks more, her piglets still wear their camouflage. A made-to-measure coat with exactly 11 stripes to be able to blend into the forest background. But this isn't sufficient to ensure their safety. Humans are the main threat for the herd. And these barks in the distance alert the vigilant mother. Sometimes a distracted piglet can miss the signal to flee. It doesn't yet understand the significance of these barks, but fear of the dog is innate, and its instinct tells it to flee as quickly as possible. No more barks, but no more herd either. At this age, the wild boar piglet is still vulnerable to the cold and to predators. It needs to get back to the safety of its family. Snout, whiskers, ears pricked, the young wild boar attempts to use its still hesitant nocturnal senses. Its sense of smell and hearing are its eyes in the dark. It uses them now to find food and build up its strength before facing the night world. Another world also wakes up, down on the ground. In the shade and coolness of night, strange figures emerge from their shelters. These night creatures are hungry. The carabid beetles, with their shiny metallic bodies, sharpen their threatening claws. Seen this close, the sharp mandibles of this small predator look formidable. When pitted against the soft and moist antennae of the gastropod, the fight seems unequal. First step, catching the prey. A mere formality when the latter moves at a pace of just six meters an hour. Then attacking it. But these first attempts are countered by the prey's impenetrable armor. So the Coleopteron waits for it to come out and attacks it again from the side. The snail uses its ultimate weapon. This unexpected secretion, thick and sticky, takes the beetle by surprise. The effect is immediate. At night, the winner isn't always the one you'd think. A good defense is sometimes more effective than an overconfident attack.
particularly as in these early hours of the night, they can appear at any moment. The element of surprise, a proven military strategy, is the tactic of the eagle owl. Because its flight feathers with their almost two meter wingspan conceal a unique secret weapon. Comb-like fringes of barbules along their leading edge that break up the flowing air and thus enable it to fly almost silently. And this is just one element of its nocturnal arsenal. Its large dilated pupils let in enough light to enable it to see both at night and in the daytime. And last but not least, the unique flexibility of its cervical vertebrae endows this lord of the night with the most formidable panoramic vision. Its first capture, a small mouse, serves only as an appetizer. The eagle owl will need much more than this to satisfy its appetite until dawn. And the range of possibilities is large, for its powerful talons are capable of seizing hold of a field mouse, a hare, as well as a cat or even a small wild boar piglet. p.m. Night has well and truly fallen. The air is much cooler now, and at this tender age, hypothermia can be fatal to the young wild boar. Only the warmth of its mother can prevent this. It needs to find her quickly. But there's no clue, no sound to guide it, no smell to lead it in the right direction. It's a night of full moon, which exacerbates animal sensitivities. But the brightness now obtained through these powerful new cameras enables us to discover the night world in a light almost equivalent to daylight. Domesticated animals and other diurnal species sleep fitfully. And the nocturnal animals have sharp eyes. But the moonbeams are of no help to the lost wild boar piglet, whose eyes can't see very much anyway. A strange new smell suddenly perturbs its senses and throws it off track. This powerful scent is that of the badger. For a long time now, this mustelid has chosen to live at night in order to escape being hunted by man for its high quality fur. the male, the task is a heavy one tonight. Six new mouths to feed. And in the badger world, it's the father's responsibility to provide food for his numerous offspring, still too young to venture out alone at night. While the female badger suckles her young in the family burrow, 
The male stocks up on food reserves outside, which he then regurgitates into the hungry mouths of his cubs. All night long, he goes back and forth feeding his young. The short, strong legs of this inveterate burrower leave no chance of escape for the insects, tubers and earthworms that he loves. The badger is an opportunistic omnivore that casts a wide net. Its sense of smell, 800 times more refined than that of humans, never lets it down, particularly when it involves identifying the foreign odor of a curious pursuer. With its jaw and its build, the badger has nothing to fear from a young wild boar. Only another badger, come to help itself to food on the same territory, can incur its anger. But to avoid any misunderstanding between neighbors, the badger has recourse to its customary technique. Systematically marking the clan's territory with unambiguous anal secretions to discourage any would-be trespasser. Each clan has its own characteristic odor and its own territory. But with the recent additions to the family, the male badger is obliged to search for food in a much wider zone than before, and this nocturnal quest can cover up to 100 hectares. Even if it means venturing into human territory, where the rich, well-stocked meadows are ideal for his new food needs. The wild boar piglet has made the right choice. It's followed the badger all the way here. In its long search for its mother, it needs to keep up its strength and the earthworms that have come out in the cool night air are a welcome treat. But night isn't only a time for feeding. It's also a time for courting. Behind these tiny lights that glow in the dark are courting rituals that only nighttime allows. They're glow worms, and more precisely, the females of the species, which alone have the capacity to shine so brightly. Every evening, the female waits until the dead of night to light up. Her challenge? To ensure the survival of the species. Her strategy? Bioluminescence. Every minute counts as the female has but the seven nights of her short life to carry out her mission. So she positions herself at the top of the stalk to light her lantern, thus optimizing her chances of being noticed. In the half-light, the male is on the lookout. He has only three or four days in which to reproduce. But nature has stacked all the odds in his favor his bulging eyes and the light reflecting shield that overlaps his head have been conceived for this unique purpose, to detect the presence of a female calling for a mate. But what is this phenomenon that gives the tall grasses this star-studded appearance? 
It's created each night from two proteins with the evocative names of luciferin and luciferase. It's the interaction of these two substances that produces this phenomenon. In the darkness, the male has finally spotted the female. to devote all her energy to the act of mating. She now dims her lights. The lights are out now, which means that fecundation has taken place. But it also announces the imminent death of the male. In the tall grasses, other lights glow intensely, then go out, a sign that the night has been a productive one. It's 2 a.m. Some of the night creatures, such as the eagle owl, take a first break, but others continue on tirelessly. Like the shrew mouse, who's starting to be disturbed in its nocturnal activities by the incessant passage of the wild boar. Just seven centimeters long and weighing only 10 grams, the shrew mouse, barely larger than an insect, needs to eat and drink every two hours in order to survive. The search for food is incessant and the energy expenditure is phenomenal for this tiny creature. But its size conceals hidden resources. A heart rate of 1,200 beats a minute capable, if necessary, of accelerating up to 3,000 beats. Insects, worms, snails, caterpillars, spiders, whatever is available to ensure its survival. You wouldn't think it, but this Lilliputian has a giant-sized appetite. And a pointed, mobile snout, the efficiency of which is inversely proportional to its size, and which is capable of detecting food 12 centimeters below ground. But tonight, the challenge is twofold. Before daybreak, the little mammal has to find a new protective shelter at all costs. Being exposed to the June heat and sunlight will kill it. Tonight, however, it's been evicted without prior notice. In nature, nothing is left to chance. 
If certain creatures are nocturnal, it's because the night affords their species better chances of survival. Not just shade and coolness. The daytime is the time of human activity. From dawn to dusk, they move about harvesting, building, hunting, making the ground tremble all day long with their activities. All this agitation is very disturbing. For numerous species, daytime is a time to keep a low profile, to sleep, or to hide out underground. But for the shrew mouse, finding a new shelter isn't that easy. Competition is fierce. And this hyperactive little creature doesn't have time to dig a new burrow. So it squats those that have been abandoned by others. But often this new shelter is already occupied. Occupied again. Three AM. The night is already well advanced. For the time being, the incessant wanderings of the wild boar piglet have preserved it from the cold. To fight hunger, its young but already efficient sense of smell has led it to food sources. Finding its herd is a vital necessity. It's still at the mercy of certain predators, but the hoped-for familiar smell is continuously masked by the variety of other odors released by the night. All day long, these thousands of tiny gas works have absorbed solar energy and transformed the carbon from the air into oxygen. For the well-being of all. They can breathe now. They stretch themselves out. At night, the process is reversed. The plants fill up with oxygen and auxin, the growth regulator hormone inhibited by daylight. They can finally open up in the cool night air. Beneath the earth, the filaments of the budding fungi are the first to benefit from the moisture that infiltrates the soil. Its thirst now quenched, the mycelium pushes up to the surface the fertile organ responsible for its reproduction. Sometimes these can grow in the space of just one night. producing a shower of spores that seed the forest with these strange creatures, not quite animal, not quite vegetal.
Some of them wait for total darkness to reveal the full panoply of their powers. They suddenly start glowing like beacons on the path of the young wild boar. In the same way as the glowworms, the bioluminescent fungi are in full seduction mode. But this time, these eerie lights aren't used to attract a mate. They're an attempt to lure into their midst this tiny fly of the Drosophilidae family to help soften the still hard wood that these fungi feed on. Every night, both on the surface of the ground and beneath it, amazing magic tricks of nature ensure the regeneration that's vital for the well-being of the forest. The night reaches its last quarter, and for some, time is running out. In its search for a shelter, the shrew mouse has now reached the edge of the forest. But its efforts have paid off. A very promising shelter is just within reach. Nervous by nature and cautious by experience, the shrew mouse checks out the area. To do this, it carefully inspects every nook and cranny of this strange rusty steel fortress thanks to the array of sensitive whiskers extending from its snout. And to complete this recce, it emits a series of ultrasounds. It shares this precious ability of echolocation with its nocturnal congener, the bat. In other words, the shrew mouse sees with its ears. This promising Tegenaria domestica, for example. And then this Scutigera coleoptrata, whose protein-packed legs are exactly what it needs to sustain it through the remainder of the night. It was too good to be true. A congener has also detected this manner. At this hour of the night, aggression wins. And when it's a question of defending its food source, the gentle shrew mouse can quickly transform into a fierce fighter. clear victory. The winner stays, the loser leaves. A feast such as this is best enjoyed alone. While some fight fiercely for their survival, 
Others take a rest from their arduous activities in this early part of the night. While the hedgehog's night is a busy one, it's also extremely well organized. From 6 to 9 p.m., an intense first phase is devoted to finding food. Then, from midnight to 2 a.m., it's time for social interactions. The third phase begins now. Extra food reserves and exploration. The hedgehog doesn't have much to fear thanks to its coat of 6,000 spines that protects it from almost all predators. Only the eagle owl or the badger are potential dangers. But every advantage has its drawbacks. Its coat also ensnares a whole host of very itchy parasites. Snout and rhinarium to the ground, this insatiable glutton sets off in search of more food. Its eyesight is poor, but it can rely on its keen sense of smell and acute hearing. The hedgehog quickens its pace. It's time to finish its course. For the prickly, insectivore has its habits. In the last hours of night, it knows where to find food in abundance. After a long search, the young wild boar has finally traced its mother. And not a moment too soon because it's now late and the piglet has expended a lot more energy than usual. But a stream separates them. And it doesn't have the experience of its elders who are excellent swimmers. Despite fatigue, the thought of being reunited with its family again spurs it on. But in its joy, it's failed to detect the near silent flapping of the eagle owl's wings. The bird of prey is out on its final hunting spree, and it's very hungry. The young wild boar has finally sensed the danger. Being out on its own has sharpened its instincts. It has to flee to shelter as quickly as possible. now is wait it out. <laughs> For the eagle owl, the defeat is bitter and the situation's urgent. Because the night is far advanced and its hunger is severe. In its late night wanderings, the hedgehog has just one main predator to fear. This time, it's had a lucky escape, but every night hundreds of its congeners aren't so lucky. A 
At last, its final nocturnal destination appears within sight. Its snout recognizes the variety and quality of all these smells. Yet this ideal territory has one major drawback, too much light. This human obsession with wanting to light up the night to resemble the day has caused confusion in the animal's biological clocks and seriously perturbed the lives of the nocturnal ones. Aside from this drawback that's becoming more and more widespread, there's everything the hedgehog needs here to satisfy its voracious appetite, both animal and vegetal proteins. It's a genuine raid on the part of the hedgehog, but at the same time, a valuable service to the gardener, as it rids him of snails and other lettuce eaters. And finally, as a precautionary measure to avoid digestive upset, once it's eaten its fill, the hedgehog eliminates any potentially toxic elements on the tip of its spines. It's almost 5.30 a.m. The moon is already waning. It's time to get a move on. The hungry eagle owl is still on the prowl. On the ground, an almost familiar scent again. Could the female pig, with its distant resemblance to the wild boar, give off an odor similar to that of the female wild boar and offer it the same protection? It's not a foolish question. In the past, the domestic pig was a wild boar, but over the centuries, domestication has transformed it. While the wild animals venture close to the farm, certain domesticated animals take the inverse path. This hunting habit goes back to ancient times when the cat was feral. Its instinct has conserved traces of this, together with its extremely sharp night vision. Hunting is no longer vital to its existence now. It won't even eat the prey that it kills each night, as it's sufficiently well fed during the day. But it isn't the only predator in the area. The element of surprise applies to all. The silence of its attack and the eagle owl's talons have finally won out. This exceptional last minute capture ends the night's hunting session.
dawning day indicates that the night animal's time is already over. They have to leave the area, maybe even more quickly than they expected. In the woods, the first rays of sunlight give the wake-up signal. In the Pays de Gettine, the world of the diurnal animals resumes its rights. Last attempt for the exhausted little wild boar, drawing upon its young memory to attempt to find the mud pool where the herd returns every morning to relax. wild boar has managed to survive its first night alone. This successful nocturnal initiation represents the first step in its learning phase. And in the wild, learning is one of the keys to survival. As day breaks, the humans who are just waking up have no idea of the animal and vegetal adventures that have just taken place in the forests. Let's hope that the night is preserved and continues to protect these intense and necessary lives that depend on it.